next, my colleague Manuel will talk about the project that we are promoting and the project that indeed is sponsored by the Global Bear Fair. We are very happy to be here. We've been attending the Bear Fair before. This is like the eighth time we are here. We've been talking about this project uh, for many years and it's really nice, really exciting for us to be here now presenting this project as a reality. What well, part of the project is still a dream, a dream of many of us, of our colleagues in Andalusia, our colleagues in the association, many of the organizations that are supporting our project. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, of course, we want to thank Tim Appleton personally for his support for many years and for making it possible that today we are here to introduce you the project. And of course, the support from Bear Life International, which uh, give us a, a bigger relevance, which we need and our colleagues uh, from the Spanish Ornithological Society and all the many other uh, organizations and people involved in this project. There are too many to be mentioned. Manuel will also mention more about them. So I will start talking about La Janda. Probably many of you, when visiting Andalusia or visiting the state of Gibraltar, you have been buried in La Janda. La Janda is in Spain, it's in southern Spain, it's in Andalusia, in the province of Cadiz. And, well, that's in the Blue Dote. So geographically talking, it's placed halfway between the Strait of Gibraltar and the Strait of Gibraltar and Doñana National Park. The wetland, is, that's where, where it was placed. As I say, formerly it was the most important uh, inland lagoon of Spain and one of the most relevant wetlands in the European continent. Uh, this is a map of the uh, 19th century showing La Janda when it was uh, still uh, a lagoon. Today, unfortunately, it's drained. We will talk more about that, and that's why we are here, because we want to recover it as much as possible. Um, in the past, I were, I'm talking about the, till the second, before the second half of the previous century, uh, when it was totally flooded in winter. After the rains, it was up to 70 square, 70 square kilometers, approximately 11 kilometers length and 6 kilometers wide, when it was totally flooded. Um, because of the extension, the variety of habitats of the lagoon itself with open water, but also a very extensive wetland, and the surrounding forest, cliffs, uh, it may be the very, very relevant uh, area both for birds, but for wildlife in general. And most importantly, or very importantly too, it is placed right at the center of one of the major uh, bird migration corridors on the planet of the state of Gibraltar. So you can imagine how important it was for, not only for the breeding birds but also for the wintering birds and the stopover in a key place, a key part of the of one of the busiest uh, raptor migration or bird migration corridors on the planet. Uh, this map is showing to the left. Uh, well, here you can see where is Tarifa, Gibraltar, the state of Gibraltar, very close to Africa. In blue is the extension of the lagoon, it was totally flooded, but it is a temporary lagoon, a system of temporary lagoons, it was not uh, in the dry season, uh, the water level was much lower and it was creating a system of up to eight different uh, lagoons, interconnected, uh, that's the ecological natural process of it, and it gives, it gives uh, also a, a, a lot of ecological relevance, this uh, characteristic of the temporary lagoon. Uh, so these small lagoons, uh, is, down here you have the names of the small lagoons during the dry season. The last one called El Aguila, the eagle, very exciting name, is the, uh, Manuel is going to talk more about that later, but that's the part of the lagoon in which we want, of the former lagoon, on which we want to act now as the restoration measurements. Um, because of the relevance of the, or the very important bear life has been attracting uh, humans' attra uh, attention for time immemorial. This is a good example of that. This is uh, in the surrounding cliffs, to, uh, in, uh, the base, in the basin of the lagoon. There are many caves, very rich in cave art. Normally, uh, the, the cave art is depicting mammals. In our region, uh, birds were so important and probably so abundant and so exceptional that many of these caves, as you can see here, are showing birds. That's uh, a very unusual thing, and it's a good uh, sign of how important the bird life of the region was. Indeed, these representations from the Neolithic period have been uh, considered like uh, one of the earlier 
expressions of bird watching or interest by human population on birds. So we could consider the region somehow like one of the first places where humans got or expressed their interest about birds. Much more recently, over the 19th century, uh, the relevance of the wetlands as a hunting uh, area for ducks especially, but also the ornithological interest of the region attracted the attention of many uh, Europeans and especially British ornithologists and hunters that were visiting Lakanda. Thanks to the notes that time and the books they have written, like Irvi, that was a, a, a Nevita native Gibraltar, or more recently <laughs> Berner, they, thanks to that, in their books we have the a lot of information of the bird life of La Handa during the explendor period of La Handa, before it was granted. Uh, we consider La Handa also, this is much more recently, this is like in the 60s and 70s of the previous century. This is just one of, uh, well, Paco Recovero is a guy, uh, today a member of our association, who in that time was one of the only persons who had a taxi, and he was uh, bringing many birders from the UK to the Handa area when it was still flooded mm -hmm. to solve in the bird specialities of the region. So it's considered also like one of the first places, La Handa in the region where bird watching tourism started. Um, that time, some examples of the relevance of the area is like, well, this is a nest photographed by Berner in 1906. It was the, just as an example of the interest of the region, is the last place where cranes bred in Spain and the Iberian Peninsula after the drainage, uh, they we lost them as, as a breeding species. But uh, thankfully, we still have, this is a, a recent image, a lot of wind farms have been built around, but we still have the cranes. And the crane is somehow the symbol of our association. Uh, there's a few silence, uh, it's a strength of the species that even if there is no weather, they are still coming. And we have indeed more than 3,000 birds, so that is encouraging us to to restore the land because the birth is to remember how important it was. A, another relevant factor is the La Handa area. This is the Andalusian hemipod or Andalusian button quail, today extinct from the European continent, and La Handa was the last known breeding place for the species in, in Spain. In now it is still survives in Morocco. And well I will talk next about the drain the drainage of the of the wetland, but it's important to consider that even if the lagoon is today disappeared, totally disappeared, it is still a very relevant place for birds, it's a very important stopover, and we have a still a very significant populations of turtle dove or quails. It's one of the few places where today in Europe you can see still flocks of uh, turtle doves probably there or after the breeding. So you can see up to 50, 60 birds together in a tree, which is something that, is, as you know, is very really difficult. So the message here is that even if it is drained, this is still very important. I'm going to make a very short explanation about the drainage, okay? The, the ownership of the land of La Handa has always been controversial. In the mid 80s, it has changed from public to private. But, and there, there have been different attempts to drain it. First, first attempt were related to the presence of mosquitoes, so it was a source of malaria, so it was a general trend of draining the wetlands. But more recently, during the second half of the previous century, uh, well, uh, let's say the modernity or prosperity was uh, considered to like drain the lagoon to gain land for the agriculture and farming. So because of that, the whole, after different attempts, they managed to, to drain it. After it was drained, the ownership of the land has changed from public to private. This has created a very thorough situation. And one of the key factors, and that's one of the big works we are doing from the association to uh, asking the or pressing the local governments and the national governments to uh, clarify what is the ownership of the land. What uh, we know today is that uh, the, the extension of the former lagoon is public land, but over the last 50 years has been used as, it's public land, but it has been used for many years as private. Mm -hmm. uh, so that has created a, a difficult situation that after a legal study, we have shown, or the central government of Spain have accepted that there is enough evidence, and there is even a, a, 
a statement from the uh, from the High Court of Spain stating that the land, even if it is used as private, is public. The problem is that the central government of Spain is accepting that, that uh, saying that it's the Andalusian regional government who should make that happen. And then the Andalusian government somehow says that it's the central government of Spain who should make that happen. In that uh, controversy, we are a bit stuck. But there is uh, still land around the lagoon, which is public, and uh, what well, is the land in which we want to work. And that's the the, uh, what, for what we need the uh, international support and funding to implement some of the actions that Manuel will explain to you later. And this is just to explain you if any of you have been in the in La Handa recently, the most typical visit is along the irrigation channel. This is the channel after heavy rains with high tides. It still gets flooded. When it rains a lot, the lagoon is recovering, the, the water is recovering, and it's, it's, it's making its way and, and refilling the lagoon. So, well, as a dream of how possible it is to, to recover it. Uh, well, just uh, before I pass it to Manuel, uh, I will talk a little bit about our association. We are working for over 25 years. Uh, one of the funding members is Christina Parker. Today is our honorary president. She is from a British uh, family based in, in, the, in the state of Iraq, Alaska. She got to know the La Handa before it was trained. She was amazed by it. And she was one of the, the key persons who started this association and all of this. And we three decades, uh, different people, some of our colleagues are here, have been working to make sure that uh, the, the presence of La Handa will not be forgotten, to keep uh, friends in the administration, to, to clarify the situation. Uh, to work with locals, to let them know about the, the interest of the area. And today, well, thanks to all that work, we started almost 30 years ago, it's quite the actual idea, and the project for which we are asking for support. Manuel is now going to give you some further information on what to do what to, to restore. Them. Better? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I, I don't need to repeat, no? More or less. Just thank you to everybody. <laughs> so, as Javi told you, uh, we are working in two ways. No? For the last 26, 26 years, we were working uh, in the recovery, in the legal recovery, just uh, to clarify all the situation with the building and now what's happening there. But now, uh, we have decided to add another. Project because when you recover a part of the Hamda, it's more vis visible. No? Politicians, people, old people can see a new wetland there, so it's more visible. So, this is the idea. No? This is the idea. And we have created uh, the Alliance Amigos del Pericón, that is a, a group with more associations, including in our big uh, alliance. So, as you can see from left to right, Ayuntamiento de Barbate. Athas de la Fuerte is part of the Ayuntamiento de Barbate, the Council of Barbate. Biopart, Fundación Sabia, Sociedad Capital de Historia Natural are contrapunto with it. So each association is very good in all the things that we didn't uh, do at the, at the past. No? For example, uh, Sociedad Gaditana, Society from Cadiz of Natural History, they are very good to um, working, for example, with spiders with other animals that they are, they are they are so important also not only birds no? so if you grow if you include more people everything is going better so we can reach uh, you know, at the end much better than at the beginning so wonderful apart of that uh, say over life for example the Spanish Bear Society is uh, a family of us of course that is at the end partner of, of our life international 
and all the well, our companies for the Australia, the company of Javier, my company, and all the others, we are pushing all in the same way. So this is our green. <laughs> The, the, the background that you can see is a real picture, but the one in the right corner down the bottom, you can see our wetland. This is called La Janda and El Aguila, the Eagle Lake. Okay? So it is uh, still, we found our president and we were, uh, some friends, we were walking there and we found, they found, it's incredible because there's a lot of changes there, but they found a small pond. It's a seal, it's a still like in the past. Never was uh, rain, never was used for agriculture. So from there, from the heart of the of the lake, we want to start the recovery of the Canada. So it is, I'm not sure if it's, can you see this pond? Right here. So from there, we want to grow and recover all the areas. So this is our idea. So let me tell you something more about this. So this idea of this wetland huge area is only this circle. So you can imagine the work that we need to do there no? to try to recover all them. But it's, it's uh, no hurry up. We are going to no rush. We have time to do it, okay? And more people is coming to the association. <coughs> you are invited to come and do what? Okay, so we need to do help. We need the help of more people to push all the time to get all the recovery of the land. So the idea, uh, you can see the limits of the reserve, is create. Uh, we say agroecological reserve Laguna de la Janda. No? So agroecological probably uh, eco farming, eco farming, no? because we think that is very important. Involve the local people, involve local economy. All the people need to push in the same way. If not, this is not possible. No? This is not possible. If we don't look to the farmers, if we don't look normal people there, that they need to work there, yeah, they need to get more. Uh, of this area also. It is not possible. So this is the idea. You can see the limits. All the surroundings are now, for example, rice paddy fields. But we need to create, for example, some part of uh, eco, you know, organic farming and this kind of thing. As you can see, if you manage uh, the land like an eco farming, okay, you can see a lot, a lot, a lot of birds following the tractor, for example. So the, the farming has a lot of influences in the wildlife. So this is the way you know, that we want to, to keep there, to, to get in that area. As you can see on the left, we um, in the blue, we want to create a, a new wetland, okay, with nothing uh, to do there. I mean, no farming there, only for uh, waterfall there, only for flamingos, only for stumbil, only for grains in the winter about 3,000 grains right now. This is not for right now. You can imagine when we can get this 10,000, why not? We are very optimistic. So a part of this, um, we want to get a part, uh, planted new trees in the surroundings. This is also a very good area for stepping birds I mean, in the surroundings. So we want to create different habitats just to attract the most bird possible in the area. So that's the, the idea. So, oh, one minute. So, so, sorry. So, this is, uh, of course, you can, you can, you can read more. You can have more information in the flyers that we have in our stand. Okay, in the Robin Marquee. So, I have only one minute to tell you, but anyway, and you have the information in our website here, the top, lagunalajanda.org. Okay, and you are invited to join us. You are invited to to write us asking that you want, okay? Because we don't have time enough in 20 minutes, but uh, I'm very happy to see you here. And that's it. Do you have any question? Sorry? Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you.